Hi, my name is Usman, I'm a photographer at Sonda Creative and senior writer at fstoppers.com and today we're going to be looking at the Venus Optics Lauer 24mm f14 macro probe lens. I know, but probably not the best idea to call this one a mouthful. So, what is this lens all about? It's a macro lens, but it's also a wide angle, which is a little bit unusual because most macro lenses tend to have a longer focal length, somewhere between 90 and 120 millimeter. But the lower lens is a 24 millimeter wide angle. But the benefit of that is you can have much more context in your images. So you can have your subject, but you've also got a background that you can look at as well. Most macro lenses will also only allow you to get one to one magnification, but the lower lens allows you to get two to one magnification. So your subject is gonna be much bigger in your frame, but once again, you've still got that background to, to give your subject context. Now the aperture on this lens is f14, which is pretty small. I mean, even with my tilt shift lenses, I generally only shoot around f8 or f10, maximum f11. So f14 is pretty small. To put that into context, if you're shooting at f28 ISO 100 and you've got correct exposure, then with the lower lens, you need to shoot somewhere between ISO 25 and 3200 to get the same exposure. This lens is not for low light, so you'll need a lot of light to get the most out of this lens, but if you do give it that light, you get some incredible looking footage and incredible looking images. But before we get into that, let's talk about the actual build, the design, and the presentation. So the one thing I really, really like about this lens is the way that it, the way it arrived, it came in this metal case, and I think presentation was really, really good. I do hope that this is the retail box that you get it in because I really like the case. Construction wise, this lens is solid metal. Really, really good in terms of design. It feels great in the hand, although it's a little bit unwieldy because of the design, really long and really heavy on one side, but in terms of build quality, really, really good. It's a completely manual lens. It doesn't have any electronic contacts. The aperture ring is completely manual as well. Your camera won't even know that there is a lens attached to it. So it is completely manual. There is no autofocus in this lens. Now, the good thing about the aperture ring is that it is de-clicked, meaning that when you're changing the aperture, you're not getting that little click step thing in between, which is great for videographers. The lens also comes with a USB cable so you can attach a portable battery to it. And the portable battery will power up the LED light on the front of the lens, which is pretty awesome, I think. I mean, this lens has LED lights built into it. It's not something that I used a lot. The few times that I did use it, wasn't a fan of it for the same reason that I don't use built-in flash. However, I'm very pleased to see that these LED lights have been built into the lens because in a pinch, I'm assuming it's probably gonna be very useful for those odd occasions where you just need that extra little bit of light. Now, for the most part, I'd say that this lens is leaning more towards video shooters than it is for photographers. And yes, you can shoot things like insects, bugs, and still life and so on with this lens, but it's not something that I do. And also, if you look at their website on all the different configurations available for this lens, you'll know that this is leaning more towards video shooters. And when it comes to filming, this lens is pretty, pretty incredible. The kind of footage you can take with this lens is, I don't think it's possible with any other lens that's currently available on the market from any of the major manufacturers. I know that there's a, there are a couple of companies that sell something similar to this, but they're really complicated in terms of design and also they cost like a heck of a lot more. So Lauer has come in and made this lens and it's just awesome. I, I really do think it's awesome. There are a few faults, we'll cover that later on in the video, but when it comes to, when it comes to the kind of footage you can take with it, you can have like your normal scene setting shots and your wide shots and so on, but then you could just get ridiculously close to your subject with this lens, because you can focus all the way down to two centimeters and that two to one magnification is just amazing. When you are shooting at two to one magnification, even with that um, F14 aperture, you're still gonna see some bokeh. And the bokeh is okay. I'm not gonna say that it's the most incredible looking bokeh I've ever seen, but this lens isn't really designed for bokeh. Also, although you can shoot at infinity focus with this lens, it's not something that I recommend doesn't look great when you're shooting um, further away from your subject. It's a little bit mushy in terms of the kind of footage that you're gonna get. But when you're shooting really close, that's when this lens really shines. Now, going back to the F14 aperture, that is something that I found which is quite useful in real world shooting. And if you're shooting outdoors in bright light with most lenses, if you wanna shoot wide open and you're shooting at 1 50th of a second, as most you know videographers do, then you probably need to put on an ND filter on the front of your lens little bit of faffing around but with the lower lens wide open is f14 so you don't need to put any filters on the front and i don't think you can put any filters on the front of the lens anyway 
The downside to that is that you can't put any fields in the front. If you wanted to use something like a polarizer or something, that might prove to be a little bit tricky with this lens. Now, the other thing I found in real world shooting is that this lens is quite a bit of a commitment. It's, it's, it's quite a big commitment to take it anywhere because it's really difficult to carry around with you. It didn't fit properly in my backpack and when I did put it in, it meant that it took up way too much space or it was difficult to carry other things. And if I were to carry it in the actual case, then it's another metal case I have to carry with me. It's, it's just a little bit of a commitment to take with you but I think for most things, it's definitely worth that. It's definitely worth the hassle to take with you because of the kind of footage you can produce. But then again, if you want to travel light and you don't want to be faffing around with something a little bit unwieldy like the uh, Lauer 24 mm then it might not be the lens that you want to take with you on every single shoot. Okay, so let's hop into Lightroom and I'm just going to show you some pictures that I took with the Lauer lens and I compared it to the 100mm macro just to give you an idea of what the differences are or, or the kind of pictures you can take with the Lauer lens versus the versus a standard macro lens. So here we have some images opened up in Lightroom now. I've got the 100mm macro on the 5D Mark IV on the left and the 24mm on the right. Both of them have been shot at f14. One light setup on a tripod, obviously the same camera. I tried to keep the uh, scenario as, as close as possible, but of course, different focal lengths, so I do need to shoot them at different distances. And first thing you'll notice is that the framing is obviously uh, quite different. This is when I was shooting at one-to-one -one magnification on both lenses. So with the 100mm macro, first of all, you're going to get um, noticeably less in terms of the frame because it's not as wide in terms of the angle of view. And also, uh, you're going to see more compression in this image because I had to be, I had to shoot much further away from the the, uh, the headphones that I'm photographing in order to get the same one-to-one uh, -one magnification. With the 24, I had to be much closer. So because of that difference in distance, you're going to see a difference in compression. You'll also notice that the colors are vastly different. Same camera, same lighting, same white balance, the lower lens does have quite a noticeable yellow shift. It might be a little bit pleasing for video, but if you're a product photographer and you need accurate colors, you're probably gonna to need to use something like a color checker passport or something to get the colors accurate. But in some scenarios, it's actually quite nice to look at, but it is a very distinct yellow shift in the colors. For the next couple of images, I shot this at one to five magnification and um, Looking at them, once again, there's a distinct difference in terms of the uh, perspective or the compression. The 100mm macro, I had to be much further away, relatively speaking, to get the same uh, magnification. With the 24mm, I had to be much closer. So you are going to notice that uh, this is obviously looking a little bit more bulbous, a little bit more rounder. This has more compression. Um, you've also got much more in the frame. So you can see the two monitors in the background with the uh, 100, with the 24mm, sorry, but you're not seeing those with the 100mm. And this is once again one of the advantage or one of the advantages of the 24mm. I don't think because of the lack of compression when you're shooting this close I don't think it's going to be the perfect uh, product photography lens but I'm pretty confident there are some product there's some fo product photographer out there who's going to absolutely knock you out of the park and use the you know use some perspective tricks to get some really interesting looking images so I do think that there's a use in there but um, personally for me I think that um, the 100mm macro is kind of like a standard lens when it comes to shooting products. Uh, the other thing, again, colors vastly different. The yellow shift is very prominent in this. Once again, same white balance, same camera, same light setup, but this is the color shift coming directly from the lens. And also I wanted to demonstrate what it looks like to go from one to one to two to one on the 24 mil. And you'll notice that the depth of field is significantly shallower on this lens because I'm working so close to the headphones. I am two centimeters away from it. So it is pretty incredible how close you can get to your subject with this lens. Um, and also it's significantly bigger in the frame. So going from, going from one to one to two to one is a very noticeable difference. Anyway, just want to wrap up this video with a few points. First thing is I did take some proper footage and a video clip for this company in Leeds, this barbershop. Uh, the guys there were awesome. So just want to give a massive thank you to those uh, to those guys for letting me use their space. Huge thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, the video is at the end of this one. So you can watch that and let me know what you think. I'm not a videographer by any means. So it's not my skill set and my editing skills are OK. But even with that, I can see the potential of this lens. It's just an incredible lens. I don't think there's anything else on the market that can uh, help you produce the kind of footage that this lens does. And uh, the fact that it just gives you this complete new dimension to the kind of clips you can produce because you can get so close and you know you can be, have your wide shots and cut in something really close. So 
I think it's pretty awesome. I'm sure that there are tons of videographers out there who can do a significantly better job than I can. And to those people, I highly, highly recommend this lens. I really do think you guys need to check out this lens. Second thing is a bit of a problem, not a major one, but still a problem nonetheless. And that's the aperture ring. I found that the aperture ring was just a little bit too loose for my liking. Every time I was trying to um, manual focus, I found that the, I would be knocking the aperture ring out of place. So I'd be, you know, I, I want to shoot wide open, but then I'd be looking at the footage thinking, why is it so dark? Oh, wait. It's our F22. So just a bit of an issue. I wish that the aperture ring was just a little bit tighter. No. I wish the aperture ring was just a little bit stiffer. No, that's worse. I wish that the aperture ring wasn't that easy to knock out of place. Um, I hope that they can fix that. It's currently on pre-order, so I think that they're still manufacturing or still in pre-production maybe, I don't know, but uh, I hope that they can fix that. Also, I think that this lens is probably best used on a mirrorless camera like the Sony a7R III for a number of reasons. IBIS, focus peaking, and also you can crop into your sensor and shoot in Super 35, which means you can get even closer to your subject. So. Shooting on its Sony a7R III is definitely something that I would recommend. And the last thing is gimbals. Uh, tried using it on a gimbal, tried it on the A2000 and the A1000. Both of them didn't work too well. The lens is just a little bit too long for you to balance it effectively. So bit of a shame there. I couldn't use it on the gimbals that I have. Hopefully there is a gimbal out there that you can use it on, but the gimbals that I have just didn't work. Um, but yeah, anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button, please subscribe. Stick around to watch the video or not, but uh, hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you.